Redux implements a design pattern that keeps all the application data in a single place called the store. We can think of this store as a box that will contain all the information about our app. By all the information, I mean that inside of this box, we will have the elements that inform us how the app should behave right now. One of these elements can inform us if the app should be showing or not the loading component. Another one could inform us if the user is trying to log in or if the user tried to log in but there was an error. Also, if the user logged in successfully. These elements are the state of the application. We can have multiple states for multiple purposes in our app. For example, the loading state. Should the loading be showing or not? The login state. Is the user trying to log in? Was there an error on login? Did the user manage to log in? The pagination state. Are we loading the pagination? Is the pagination loaded? Was there any error? On which page are we right now? What are the results that are being presented? All those states combined form the app state. So the store is the entity that has all the app state inside itself. With this, we have what's called a single source of truth. Want to know something about the app? Just ask the store. So let's imagine we are in our app's login page and this page has access to the store. What's happening here is that our login page is keeping an eye on the state, reacting to those state changes and just doing what it has to do based on the current state. Let's now imagine that the user just entered the app and is currently in the login page. The login state informs us that pretty much nothing is happening. There is no error to show, the user is not logged in, the user is not trying to log in and we don't even know who that user is. Now the user fills in the email and password of the login page and clicks on the login button. What has to happen is that this click on the button will fire an event and this event will change the state of the app to inform that the user is trying to log in. Remember that the login page is watching the login state, so it will realize that now the user is trying to log in and that will show the loading component. Let's imagine we got an error response from the server that informs us that no user was found with that email. So what needs to happen right now is that the service that made the call to the back end will fire a new event to the store and this event will change the state of the app to inform that there was an error on logging. The login page is watching the login state, so it will realize the user is not logging in anymore, so the loading component can disappear. And the page will also realize that there is an error, so the page will show that error. Now let's imagine the user realized the email was actually incorrect, put his correct email and clicked on the login button. What has to happen is that this click on the button will fire an event and this event will change the state of the app to inform that the error should disappear and the user is trying to log in. The login page is watching the login state, so it will realize the user is trying to log in and it will show again the loading component. Now let's finally imagine that the login was successful. The service that called the backend will then fire a new event to the store and then the store will have its login state updated. The login page is watching the login state. So it will realize the user is not logging in anymore and it will hide the loading component. It will also realize that now the user is logged in, so the login page will redirect the user to the home page. You can notice here that our login page is just doing what the state is telling it to do. Every change on the login state is watched by the login page and then the login page acts on top of that state. The login page is reacting to the store. So this is the idea of Redux and state management. But in the Redux world, we have some steps involved that were not shown here as I was just explaining the idea behind it. But I'll show it right now, don't worry. Let's first restart our app with the initial login screen. The state is in its initial form, so no errors, the user is not logged in, the user is not logging in, and we don't even know who that user is. The user clicks on the login button and that will fire an event. In the Redux world, instead of an event, we have something called action. This action is what's going to inform the store that something happened and that the store needs to change. Every action has a type and it can have a payload. The type is what kind of action is happening and the payload is some information that will be sent with that action. In our case, the action has the type logging and we don't need any payload for now. This action will go through something called reducer. A reducer is a function that has access to the current state of the store 
and it also knows how to update the store. You should know that the store doesn't update itself. It's the reducer who is responsible for this. The reducer has something like a switch case statement that, based on the type of the action that the reducer received, it will execute some instructions and will return the new state of the store. So let's focus on the action that we just dispatched. It has the type logging. This action will go to the reducer and the reducer will find the correct switch case statement that knows how to handle that action. In this case, the reducer will return the current state of the store and change the is logging in information to true. After executed, the app state will be updated. The login page is watching the login state, so it will realize that now the user is trying to log in and it will show the loading component. What happens next is that we'll have an error on login. The service that made that call to the backend will then dispatch a new action with the type login fail and a payload with the error that was returned by the backend. The reducer will receive that action, find out how to take care of it and it will return the new state to the store. The new state will be based on the old state, it will have the login error and it will also inform that the user is not logging in anymore. The login page is watching the login state, so the loading component can disappear and the page will also show the login error. Now the user will try to log in again. The login action is dispatched to the reducer. The reducer gets that action, finds out how to take care of it and returns the new state, which will have the previous state without the error and also is gonna set the is logging in to true. The loading component will show up again and the service is gonna call the backend. This time the backend responds successfully, so the service will dispatch another action. This action will have the type logging success and the payload will have the user information. The reducer will then receive that action, find out how to take care of it and will return the new state to the store. The new state will receive the old state, it will change the is logged into true, it will change the is logging into false and it will add the user information. So let's finish with this image that summarizes all the flow of the Redux. We have the component, which is our page. When the user clicks on the login button, the page dispatches an action and this action is of the type login. The login action is received by the reducer and the reducer knows how to take care of that action. The reducer then merges the current state with the payload and returns that new state to the store. The store can have multiple states, so what's happening here is that our view is selecting one of those states to react on top of it. We also have this other part of the Redux idea, which are the effects. This subject is really, really interesting and really helps us reducing the amount of code in our app. But first, let's implement the Redux on our apps, both the Ionic Framework app and the React Native app. And after we have this idea implemented, then we talk about the effects and implement those effects. So if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed, and if you want to follow the development of real apps using Ionic Framework and React Native, share this video with your dev friends and see you on the next video.